So I've spent the week in a Scania R series, 410 horsepower. And even though it's lacking the power, I've really missed this lorry. I didn't realize how much until I drove it again. Uh, my old, one of the old jobs I did, say two months over Christmas and New Year's, I, yeah, I didn't realize how much I missed this lorry. <laughs> First time I've driven it, I've driven a Scania since uh, coming back on the agency. And anyway, even though this is a 410 horsepower, a pretty basic model, I'll uh, give it a little look around. Up here, three storage lockers, you got bulbs and stuff in that one. Oh, tiny room stand up as well. Although this one has a uh, manual sunroof, which eh, I don't really, I don't really open the sunroof anyway, so it doesn't affect me. But yeah, locker, nice big one here with improvised number plate, slightly smaller one. Is there enough room in it anyway? Uh, top bank, reading light, storage here and storage over there as well. Uh, top bank, but for some reason this does not have a ladder. Uh, you got your bottom bank with a reading light over there as well and over there. Uh, passenger seat folds up. Can unclip the seat belt there as well. Uh, also folds down. Makes another little uh, table on the bottom bunk can actually come out of it, so it gives you a bit more bedroom. Although to be fair, I'm only a small guy, so uh, the pushed-in bunk plenty enough for me. Also, passenger side, click that. Another little table thingy. And you have two cup holders down here. Uh, 24 volt hella socket and 12 volt normal cigarette. Sun visors on this one, they're just pretty standard. Nothing much to yell about. You got your tachograph, this is the Stone Ridge version, which is the one that counts down from four and a half rather than counts up. This switch, if any of you are wondering, automatic download of your digital tachograph. Even though it's in the form of a switch, the driver never needs to touch it. Because it's all done by uh, by the employer. I think you have to subscribe to a subscription with Scania to actually use it, but it seems to be kept standard in these models now. There we go. Got a little shelf thing. One thing in there for bridge tag, keys, pens, whatever. Can't really hold much in there. And you've got a drawer beer, keep your paperwork, gubbins, whatever. Bit of uh, toilet paper, clean windows. Uh, a cup holder, a little storage cubby down there, pretty simple. Uh, more storage over here, obviously. Uh, radio, uh, this is a... Uh, it's got a Scania logo on the thing, so I'm not sure if it's came with a unit, but I think that's third party. Alright, uh, anyway, radio, that'll be there. It's not, it's not much different from the standard one I'm used to anyway. I think in the bigger models, this little square here, is uh, is an auxiliary port there, so but this one is put it there, so have it there. Now. Various switches, lane departure, heated windows, collision warning, night lights, reading light, obviously interior lights, and that's when you open the door or turn them all off, off all together. Standard climate controls, aircon recirculation, night heater, with the. Uh, the slightly higher end models. All this is a digital display, but obviously because they've lowered the dash, they've just put standard little knobs in there. Alright, you're gonna have to trust me, but behind there there's a little valve for an air gun. There you go, another little bit of storage, another cigarette port down here. Traction control, um, mid lift raise, weight transfer, and a little switch, hill hold. And this is like the uh, Scania's, I don't know what they call it, but uh, notice which way the cab's facing, it's facing that way. So that would be the rear fog lights, and that is the uh, spotlight on the back on the catwalk. If it had uh, front fog lights, it'd be there. Then there's like front spotlights in the bumper as well. And then if you got if you got spotlights on the roof as well, and that's where that's for. Then just change the clock there. Uh, over here, 
reverse beeper, cruise control. I don't know why that's ever off, but there we are. You see adjust your lights, your hazards, lights, blah, blah, blah. DPF filter, so you don't need it now. Uh, exhaust brake while you press the foot brake. The uh, level reset, alternate level, and then just up and down for the suspension. I really like the suspension for those new Scania's. They, it's just there, it's simple, you don't have to fiddle with the remote. And I don't know why more people don't do that. A lot of uh, manufacturers now have started doing just put the self level on the dash, which is better, I suppose. That's lit up like a Christmas tree now, because I didn't press all the buttons. So, oh yeah. Ignore the ABS, that's not actually a problem. Yeah, if you press up and up, I'll be cruise control, fuel consumption, average speed. Uh, there's various information, if you're a good driver or not. 99% or oh, I'm a beast. <laughs> uh, also tells you tachograph time, I don't have my card in yet because still uh, two minutes till the start of my shift, so my plan today was to uh, arrive a bit early, well, leave the house a bit early so I can beat the traffic, as uh, usually when I do a Friday night trunk run, the traffic adds at least half hour onto your journey, which kills me, but the one day I leave early, there's no need, we'll figure. But, see those green dots? That means how many uh, reduced rests, and on this one, how many extended drives you got left. Yeah, I haven't had time keeping a track of your hours. It's a really good feature. I really like that. I'm not pushed my time all the time, so I need it, but good to have it. On the steering wheel. On a Press the right hand. Shows your air pressure, your current fuel consumption, turbo, all a load of information. Program the top button there, so whether you want cruise control, diff lock, whatever reason. Your oil pressure, your fuel consumption, add blue, red pressure. I don't really see any reason to take it off, add blue. Right, driver's seat. Got your lumbar controls. Seat height, whether how much bounces in it. As of your hair and the tilt, whatever. Side lockers. Yeah, nice size on that. To open the bonnet, pull this lever on the, on the driver's side door. And lift the bonnet. Yep, it's locked in. You don't need to pull the thing for this bottom, which you can use as a step to. Uh, Uh, so in the back end here, this is how you think, you just pull that, no switches or nothing. Uh, Anderson lead, Suzy's, you get the idea. Standard, that's it too fancy. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. Yeah, really like these, uh, really like these Scania's, even though this one is a uh, Slightly underpowered for the weight to can pull, but this job, trunk run for a courier, the mid lift doesn't even drop at all. There's just there's no need for it, so I think the maximum weight payload that ever really gets put on, they say, is roughly around 8 tons, which is nothing. I mean, weight wise, weight wise, you can do this work in a rigid. Just, so it's just falling basically. I know this has not been the uh, the new Scania. This has been the old R series now. Even though this is a 65 plate. So it's only, uh, it's only about a year and a half old, is it? Oh, the 67 plates are out next week. Time flies, isn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna put everything back that I've just messed up in doing this video. And I get a move on. So, yeah. Once again. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Go on, eh? Get a bit.